Okay, so if you bought my kit, you're obviously wanting to pressure test a head. I have a head here that I already know is cracked, but I'll be uh, setting it up to show you um, how to use this kit to determine if yours is cracked. You've got two plates. This is the um, exhaust plate. This is the bottom plate, which covers up the cylinder holes. Then you've got your, um, your valve plate, which goes over the thermostat hole. And there's two bolts that hold that in place right there. I have the washers with it. Then there's the 10 larger bolts with nuts for holding the bottom plate on. These larger washers will actually go in here on the top side. And these smaller washers are on the plate side. Then there are 11 smaller bolts. I already have washers in place there too. That's for the um, exhaust plate. So let me get this set up here and I'll show you. The first thing you want to do is get the, um, the valve plate in place. Okay, there's a couple other things you're going to want to have ready. Um, in this case, I have some 91% isopropyl alcohol. I use that to clean the surfaces. So the bottom plate here, the bottom area, uh, where the plate's going to go, needs to be cleared of any oil. You're going to want to go over that with 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol, clean rag, make sure there's nothing stuck in the bottom that would prevent it from getting a nice flat seal on there. So clean that really well. And the same holds true for your exhaust manifold area there where the, the exhaust plate's going to go. You're also going to want to have uh, some sort of pump. In this case, it's just a bike pump. I think I got this at Walmart. Um, it has a, um, a built-in uh, pressure gauge, and it's got dual settings here for Schrader or Presta, va Presta valves. In this case, you're going to be using the standard Schrader valve, which is like on a, a car tire or a bike tire. And then this is your sealant tape. Um, I did originally use the Gorilla Glue. Um, waterproof tape, but it left a lot of residue behind it. It ended up being a very messy job. So this is what I'm using now, which is the just um, the duct tape. And this is the wider type. So you get a little bit less hassle putting it on because you can, um, you can do it in two strips down the bottom of the exhaust here. So then um, I was not able to use the tape on the... Um, uh, the valve right here. So you can see I just put some silicone in there, put a bead of silicone around the edge, uh, clean it well too, and use some, um, again, 91% isopropyl alcohol. Sorry. And then just put a bead around the outside of that ring where the thermostat goes, put the valve plate on top, and then just put these two bolts in place here. And you want to tighten these down. And you don't want to tighten any of this stuff down so tight that it's bending the plates. The plates are what's called ACM. It's plastic with sheets of aluminum on the outside to make sure it's very flat. Um, anything that you want to tighten down, just tighten it to the point where it's snug. If you find that the it's biting into the ACM, you're tightening it too much. Uh, and it's going to reduce the, the number of times you can use these plates. So this is the first thing you want to do is put that on, tighten it down, and then let that dry overnight. And I'll pick up tomorrow with the uh, rest of it. But you do want to let that dry. And um, I wish there was a way of doing it all in one quick shot. But unfortunately, to get a good seal... That's the best thing I found is using silicone on that plate. After the silicone's dried, you're going to want to clean off the exhaust manifold area really well. Use 91% isopropyl alcohol, uh, clean rag, and just make sure there's no debris on there, anything that prevent it from having a good seal. So I will uh, put the tape on there and show you where I cut the holes. So we'll be able to put the plate on next. Once you're done, this is how it should look. And this is why I went with the thicker tape, this Gorilla tape that um, I think it's like $16 at Home Depot. It's a large roll. So you can use it for a lot of other stuff too. 
and it'll fit across here in a single piece. You want to apply it as straight as you can. No wrinkles. If there are wrinkles, you're going to have to pull it up and start over again. And smooth it down. Really press it onto the surface and make sure there's no gaps anywhere. And then using an X-Acto blade, you cut out the bolt holes. And the bolt holes will correspond to where the holes are on the plate. Now you'll notice that there are a couple other little holes, like one right here and one over here that you're not going to want to cut out. Those aren't bolt holes. Those are where the alignment pins go when the exhaust manifold is installed. So don't cut those out. You can use this as a guide to make sure that you're only cutting out the right holes. And then the next thing you want to do is put the bolts on with the washers, the smaller bolts. That's these back here. And again, just get it nice and snug. Don't tighten it to the point where it's biting into the plate. And I will do that next. Once all the bolts are in place, it should look like this. And if I had to say, you're going to be torquing that to a certain pressure, maybe like about maximum, no more than 10 Newton meters. That should be, I don't know if that translates into foot, translate into foot pounds because my um, small torque wrench is only in Newton meters. But that's about what I'd say, that no more than 10 Newton meters to tighten these things down. Um, and next we're going to apply the bottom plate. Uh, once again, I can't emphasize this enough, you really need to clean that, make sure there's no oil that dripped down while you're putting these other plates on. Sometimes oil can run down. So clean it one last time, and uh, I'll apply the tape now and show you how that works out. This is what it should look like when you're done with the uh, tape on the, the bottom right here. So I did it in two pieces. You just have to make sure that you don't have um, a gap anywhere where any of these holes are for the water to go through. Um, we're obviously going to be using air instead of water, but if you happen to have uh, like a smaller roll of tape that doesn't cover that full gap, there, there's really nothing in the center here. So these two pieces work really well. Now there is a hole down here on this end that will cause a problem if you run the tape all the way out. So what I did is I stopped it right here at the end of these two water holes and then put a third piece right here. So all of the water holes have a complete seal all the way around the outside. Then I use an X-Acto knife to cut the holes out. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your bolt, put the small washer on, and you're just gonna insert these through. And once you flip it over, you will use the larger washer and the bolt to, uh, to tighten that down. I think that's a 17 millimeter bolt. I'll verify that. And then these ones on the exhaust are, uh, are a 13 millimeter. So I will put the bolts in and tighten it down and continue from there. The plate in place, it should look like this on the bottom side. And those bolts are snug. Those are 17 millimeter bolts. Uh, and the nuts are 17 millimeters also. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but the bolts for the exhaust are 13 millimeter. And then on the inside here, you can just see the, the washers and the bolts in place. And now you are ready to pressure test it. So now that you have the plates on it and uh, it's all sealed up, you just want to put the pump onto it. As I said, this one has a pressure gauge built in and just want to pump it up. I found this works better in a quiet environment. In this case, my garage is very quiet. You can actually sometimes hear the hiss as you pump it up. The pressure, it's sometimes around like 40 to 30 to 40 uh, PSI. So right now it's 
and it's around 25. But if you listen really closely, sometimes you can hear a hiss. But what you want to do is take, I, in this case, I'm using water. Originally, I used isopropyl alcohol, but I found that it got onto the uh, adhesive on the tape and turned it into a goopy mess. So we're just going to kind of pour some water into here. And there is your crack. It's a very common place to find it, right there. That was my cracked head there. You can try other ones as well. But, and if you're not sure, if it sometimes I've had very, very small leaks, in which case I uh, will pump it up to a specific pressure and let it sit there for about an hour or so. And then you'll come back and you'll see that the pressure's dropped significantly. Um, it's not a perfect way of testing it because sometimes the adhesive on the tape will leak a little bit, but the surest way is to look for bubbles, and this one's pretty drastic. I've seen ones where it's just a small trail of bubbles, it took me two or three times looking for it, and I actually heard the hissing sound um, before I saw it, and it got a little bit closer, and you can definitely see a trail of bubbles coming up from the same exact location. So, and this seems to be a very common area where I'm seeing it right here. This is on uh, between um, cylinders one and two on the exhaust side. So hopefully this is not what you are seeing, but it's better to find out now than to uh, <clears throat> put it all back together and end up with oil, uh, water in the oil and burn up your supercharger like I did. I hope this helped you, and uh, good luck.